Hi, I'm Mike Bellevue. I'm the black powder editor of Guns of the Old West magazine. And about 15 years ago, I wanted to load black powder shot shells to use in cowboy action matches. But I really didn't want to spend the money to get a press just to load shot shells. I figured there had to be a cheaper way or an easier way. And in point of fact, there certainly are several cheaper and easier ways. And I'm going to go over three of them in this series. There'll be three videos in this series uh, that will all deal with different ways of loading shot shells without using a reloading press. Uh, this current video is going to be about the nail and dowel method, and that will be immediately apparent as to why it's named that. This is the least expensive way of loading shot shells, and it's really easy, and it, it uses materials you probably already have around your house. Uh, the second video will cover the lee loading tools. And then the third video will cover loading shot shells with uh, antique reloading tools. And these are very easy to find around at uh, gun shows or antique sh shops. And uh, it's, it's really a lot of fun. So I hope you'll stick with this and see all three. All right, before we get into the actual uh, nail and dowel method, uh, I want to go over a few things that are going to be common to all of the loading methods. So they'll be common in all the videos. Uh, first of all, our components. Uh, you're going to need wads. Now, you could use plastic wads, and what I'm going to show you will work just as well for uh, smokeless powder as it will for black powder, but I really don't like the plastic wads. I like the flexibility of being able to build a load column uh, using cardboard and fiber wads. So, as you can see, there are three kinds of wads that we'll need. There's a thick over powder wad, uh, there's a springy cushion wad, and then there are overshot wads that uh, cap off the entire round. Now, besides wads, we're going to need to put powder and shot into our shot shells, obviously. And uh, it's important to know how much of each to put in. So, as you know, standard uh, shot charges are 7 eighths of an ounce, 1 ounce, or 1 and a quarter ounces. Now, you could put anything you want in, but in order to figure out how to get the right load of shot, and we just have to do some simple math. So everyone knows that one pound equals 7,000 grains. So if you do the math, that'll tell you that an ounce of shot is going to be 437.5 grains. And the way you get an appropriately sized measure made for shot is to take that knowledge of how much it should weigh and weigh out the shot on a scale. So on any reloading scale, uh, just fill up the pan until you have 437.5 grains of uh, lead in there, and that is going to equal one ounce. Now, in order to translate that from a weight to a uh, volume type measure, uh, just take an empty shot shell that still has a dead primer in it and pour those, uh, those pellets into that shot shell. It's just that easy. Okay, after you've poured uh, your pellets into the shot shell, hold it up to the light, see how high the pellets go, and take a Sharpie marker and mark the height of uh, that column. And then all you have to do is get your X-Acto knife out, cut the, uh, the shell off right at that line, and you're going to have a scoop that will throw one ounce of shot. Okay, well, this is our, uh, our measure for shot. But along with measuring out the appropriate load of shot, we also need the appropriate charge of powder. So you can make measures for that or you can buy them. Uh, you could, in fact, use this self-same measure if you're loading with black powder. Uh, this will throw about 60 grains, and that's a square load, equal volume of powder and shot, which is a very popular black powder load. But the techniques that I'm showing you, they will work equally well with black powder or with smokeless powder. Uh, now with black powder you're going to throw very substantial charges like this 60 grain charge or actually I'm going to show you an 82 grain charge that I typically use. But with smokeless you're going to be using much less powder. A load like, like this will blow you up. Don't do it. So you could make scoops uh, but very inexpensive way to go is this Lee powder measure kit. Uh, this has a variety of scoops in it. They're all labeled. They're all labeled by volume. This is a 1.3 cc scoop right here. 
and uh, I would consult if you're if you're using smokeless powder consult a good reloading manual get the appropriate charge and then find the scoop that throws that charge and the best way to do that is to verify it on a scale and that's that's what you should do uh, so pick your powder pick your measure and get loading okay, I called this uh, method of loading shot shells the nail and dowel method because basically that's exactly what you're going to use so as far as uh, gear goes you're going to need to get a nail I'm using a 40 penny nail here but any nail that will reach the bottom of the shell and still be able to uh, take a whack from a hammer. You're going to need just a scrap piece of 2x4, a 7 8 inch washer, and a wooden dowel. And uh, if you've got that, you can load shot shells. All right, you're also going to need a few tools. Uh, the mallet and the X-Acto knife you are going to use in the actual loading process. The drill and the spade bits, you're going to use that to make the one piece of specialized gear that you've got to have to load shot shells and that's a uh, decapping block and we'll show you exactly what that is very simple with the 7 8 inch spade bit uh, just cut a shallow hole into your block uh, it only needs to be between an eighth and a quarter of an inch thick then take the half inch bit and bore a hole straight through the block uh, right in the center of the uh, circle you just cut. Well, this is our finished decapping block. As you can see, it's got a washer, then the hole that the uh, spent primers will fall through. And one thing I did is I also relieved the back of it. That's, that allows you to build up some primers inside. Uh, so you don't have to keep moving the block every time you take out a primer. You can deprime a number of shells and then move the primers out of the way. Well, this is our complete kit for the nail and dowel uh, reloading technique. We've got the decapping block that we just made. We've got a 40 penny nail that we're going to use as a decapping pin. We've got our handy dandy all purpose dowel, we've got a mallet, and then we've got a flat piece of scrap steel, and that's going to be very important for priming, and you'll see how that works in a second. Uh, but this is the whole kit, and now let's show you exactly how you're going to use it. Well, this is the uh, nail and dowel method of reloading shot shells. And we start off with a full size shell like this. You can see the star crimp on it. And what we would do, and I'm not going to actually do it, but we would cut that off with this X-Acto knife right here. And what we get then is a shell that looks like this because with this method we can't put a crimp on it. Uh, we'll show you some other methods where you can, but for now we're going to cut it off. So we take the shell and we've got our our decapping block and we whack it. As you can see we are decapped and we're now ready to load. And the spent primer falls right out bottom of that block. Now take our piece of steel, take a good primer, get a dowel, put it right over there, and now we're primed. Just that simple. Alright, so now we need to get some powder into it. And we're going to be using some GoX 2FG. And I poured it into this container. Now, I know that I told you before that you could use the same scoop that we're using for, uh, for shot to load powder, right? The scoop right here, our one ounce scoop. And this is 60 grains. I prefer to use an 82 grain load and this is an antique measure that I'll be telling you more about later but that's what I use. You can make measures that uh, really are any size that you need. So we'll just pour this in and we've got our powder. Okay, so the next step now 
is to seat an overpowder wad. So we're going to put this right in. All right, we'll get our stick. And you see I've got little arrows on it because I always whack that end. So that's my working end right here. Now, I compress the powder by giving it a little bit of a whack. Next thing we're going to do is we are going to put in a cushion wad. All right, so... And we'll work this in. This is going to be a little more difficult than usual because uh, ordinarily I would have expanded the mouth on this a little bit, but I was in a hurry and I didn't do that. So we just push that in. Right. Now I'm going to take my one ounce scoop. Dip it in the shot. Get a good load of shot on it. Okay, so now we've got one ounce of shot and we'll just pour it in. All right. Okay. Now, last step. Is I'm going to take this overshot card and I'm going to put it in. Now, if I didn't want to have as much space as I've got here, I could have uh, used another overpowder card to take up that space. Uh, I could trim the shell a little bit, but this won't hurt anything. It'll work just fine, and we're all done. The, the only other step I would do is to seal the top with a little bit of glue. Yeah, mix uh, regular Elmer's white glue, about 50-50 uh, glue and water, and just swab a little bit right around the joint uh, where the card uh, touches the plastic shell case. And when it dries, it'll seal it up, and it'll ensure that the card won't fly out under recoil, which is uh, which would cause you obviously to lose your entire load of pellets. And that's all you need to do. You've got a finished round, and it probably didn't cost two dollars to pull together all the supplies you need to put your reloading kit together. Now, in the next step in the series, we'll take a look at lee loaders and uh, how to use them to also load shot shells without a press.